And one of those members is State Representative Grant Worley of Naperville. He joins us now live with an update on their work. Representative, thanks for joining us on this Friday night. Mike and Ben, it's great to be with you. Bring us up to speed on what you all were able to accomplish uh, during your first meeting. So our first meeting was uh, procedural in nature. We uh, outlined um, sort of the, the charge was brought forward by Leader Durkin. Uh, that was read into the record. We issued uh, a request for some documents. Uh, we were hoping to get a schedule, but uh, that didn't happen. What we're waiting on now, however, is uh, we're jointly reaching out to the United States Attorney uh, John Lausch in Chicago to make sure that our investigation will not impede the federal ongoing investigation into the speaker's activities. And, and Representative, some critics say that this is not necessarily bipartisan. Well, uh, rooting out corruption in Illinois should uh, should not be a partisan issue. Um, there's three members from each party for a reason. I hope that uh, they are as committed to going where the facts and the truth leads us as we are on our side of the aisle. Uh, as you know, our, our state has a long history in corruption, and it's going to take both parties stepping forward to root out uh, this awful public corruption. Federal prosecutors, with all of their resources and their subpoena power and their ability to compel witnesses, uh, couldn't or at least have have not yet brought criminal charges against Speaker Madigan. Uh, what makes you think that your group is actually going to be able to unearth uh, additional information, or is this more just about keeping the political fire and pressure burning uh, uh, against the, the longest serving speaker in the country's history? So I would argue that with the evidence presented in the deferred prosecution agreement, these are facts that ComEd has agreed to. Uh, they, they are worse than a charge because they're, they're agreed to by the uh, United States Attorney and Commonwealth of Edison, the largest energy provider in the state of Illinois. They have to pay a $200 million fine. So we hope to get the supporting documents to that. But if you read the deferred prosecution agreement, there's enough evidence in there to move forward with conduct unbecoming and um, bringing disrespect to the office. In what way, if any, do you think this could affect the upcoming election? Well, uh, hopefully we can get this wrapped up in time before the election. Um, it, it shouldn't be an eight-week process, and that's about how far out we are from the election. But uh, there's no doubt that this, uh, the timing of this was not ideal. However, we didn't set the timing. Uh, this is something that uh, the federal investigation has led us to. We've been trying to uh, get ethics reform in Illinois for ever since I took a seat in the General Assembly. That's about five and a half years, and we still don't have that. So it's, it's a series of events that led us to where we are now. Timing with the election just happens to be happenstance, in my one, opinion. One of the ways that Speaker Madigan has been able to exercise so much control, not just over the levers of government of state power, but also over uh, the Democratic Party, is by financing uh, candidates uh, for the State House and other races. Have you seen any signs with eight weeks to go before you know, state representative races, et cetera, uh, that more more people are distancing themselves from Madigan, perhaps not taking um, the, the party money from him? Um, well, there are some bold Democrats that step forward and ask for his resignation, and we, uh, I have Just a them. few, though, just a handful. Just a handful. Uh, but when you talk about the campaign finance, I mean, I know firsthand the amount of uh, money that the speaker can pour into campaigns. I mean, I've seen 500 thousand uh, dollars against me and it's only September 11th um, so that's what he does he, he uses his power to build up his, his coffers for campaign finance and then he finds candidates that will support him um, and he, he pays basically pays for their campaigns and then they go to Springfield and, and they fall in line with the speaker uh, that's not how democracy is supposed to work we're supposed to represent the people uh, that we're elected to represent and not a party uh, and that goes in both chambers we, we should be representing 108,000 people that were elected to represent Alrighty, State Representative Grant Worley from Naperville, we appreciate you joining us. Pleasure to be with you.